God bless you, family. It is good to be with you again in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is our King, who is our Deliverer, and who is our Savior. Uh, we're here today in hopes to leave a word that will comfort you, that will bless you, that will inspire you, that will lift you from wherever you find yourself this morning, whatever struggles, whatever challenges, whatever situations you find yourself in, we're here to be a blessing to you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. For those of you that are rejoicing, we're also here to rejoice with you and to thank God for his mighty acts and his excellent greatness in your life. Thank him for the doors that are being opened for you. Even in this time of challenge, you are finding a place in God where there is peace, where there is safety, where there is excitement about what God is doing in your life. So I encourage you to take that excitement and share with those around you how good God has truly been. Certainly if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? But we are here because God has been so good to us. He's been supplying our needs. Even in the times that we didn't know how God was going to work it out. While we were trying to figure it out, God was already working it out for us. Oh, praise the name of our God. Now today, again, as we always do, we want to start the prayer over you and your family and the body of Christ and God will continue to work miraculous works in our midst in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we thank you now for your bountiful blessings, for your tender mercy and your grace. We thank you because you continue to open doors. You continue to make ways for us. You continue to fight our battles. In the time of war, you were there as our conquering king. So, Lord, today we thank you. We thank you for just being present in our midst, for never leaving us alone, for never forsaking us, but always, Lord God, hallelujah, bringing unto the believer the victory that is needed to keep us going from day to day, from hour to hour, from moment to moment. So, Lord God, we ask you to strengthen our relationships in our homes with our families. Help us to love one another as you have called us, oh God, to love each other in Christ. And then, Lord God, help us to be positioned and to, oh God, position us in a way that we can touch the lives of those around us so that the light of Christ can shine in our midst. Shine all around us, Jesus. Let the light of Christ be seen in everything we do every aspect of our life, every intricate part of our activities. Let the glory of the Lord rise in our midst. And then those that are listening on right now, wherever they are, Lord Jesus, I ask you to meet their needs. I ask you to bless them, Lord God, so that they're able to see that you are a loving and caring Savior. A God that is able to heal a God that is able to defend. A God that is able to give joy in the midst of even struggles and challenges. A God that is able to give peace when there is no peace. Oh God, we're depending on you. Because in our flesh, we know that we don't have the power to overcome sin, to overcome shame, to overcome the darkness that is in the world. But, oh God, we thank you because we know through Christ all things are possible. Now, God, as we go into this service today, we ask you to bless your people and keep them, Lord God, encouraged through Christ Jesus our Lord. It is our prayer. Amen and amen. So at this time, we're going to ask our praise team leader to come and she lead you in worship and praise and in song. We ask you to receive her, but don't just sit in your house and watch what is going on. We want you to participate in our service. We want you to clap your hands. We want you to lift your voice, and we want you to give God the praise. But certainly, he's not a God that's bound by location or your locale. 
Amen. He is able to come where you are and to meet your needs right now. Let us rejoice together in the Lord. Hallelujah. Give him the highest praise. And certainly, he's worthy of your praise. In Jesus' name. Lord, everyone, I give honor to Christ who is the head of my life. I thank God for being in his presence one more time. I thank God that I can be in his house to worship, and I, and I thank God so much that you are here worshiping in spirit with me. I am always excited to be in the house of the Lord, so today nothing different. We just want to encourage you and remind you that God is still in control and that we can trade our sorrows and all of our Pain, and we can lay it down and pick up the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. And I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Oh, I'm trading, I'm trading my Yes, Lord. 
Everybody, come on and clap your hands and give God some praise. And certainly, He is an awesome God and He's worthy to be praised. Thank you, praise to the leader, for your faithfulness and your dedication to the work of God. And certainly, everyone that is a part is important. Everything that we do, we do to glorify and to honor our King. So it's not about just having the largest church, even though large churches are very nice. It's not about having the biggest choir, even though having large choirs are very nice. And we rejoice in those things, but it's about our personal praise. It's about our personal relationship with Christ. So whenever we find ourselves, in our home, in our bedrooms, in our closet, in our praise our God, in our back, in the sun room, wherever we are right now. It is the time and the place to worship God. But He has given us life. Because of this, He is worthy of our praise. No matter where we find ourselves, no matter what we're going through, God is worthy of our praise. Lift up your voice, O oh, ye people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Clap your hands and give him praise. Certainly the Lord is a mighty God. Fighting your battle right now. You need to praise him. You need to thank him. You need to glorify him. And the book of John. 21st chapter, and that is the Gospel of John. 
the 21st chapter. Starting at the first verse. It says, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon, Peter, and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter, Simon Peter saith unto them, I go fishing with them. And they say unto him, we also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. And Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. He said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. And they cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw in for the multitude of fishes. Therefore the disciples whom Jesus loved, the disciple whom Jesus loved, said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits dragging the net with fishes. As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon and bread. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fish, a hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, Yet was not the net broken. Jesus said unto them, Come and die. And none of the disciples has asked him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them, and fish likewise. This is now, this is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. After that, he was risen from the dead. Lord God, we thank you for the reading of your word in our midst today. As we began to share this word with your children and your people that are listening on, those that are listening in, we ask you now to open up our hearts and our ears that we can be receptive unto thy word. But certainly, Lord God, you have written it for our learning. You have shared it so that we could come into the knowledge of what Christ desires for us as a body in him. Lord God, for certainly we need you to use us as a vessel that is fit for your use. Make us a vessel of honor, we pray. Certainly, Lord God, this is the hour that men are to look up to Christ and live. Lord God, we thank you. For the blood that was shed on Calvary's rugged cross. Thank you for the wounds in your side, the bruises in your hand and in your Thank you because you bore the thorn of crowns that we should have bore upon our heads. You took the lashes and the bruises in your back from the whip that we should have received. Thank you because you loved us enough that while we were lost in sin, you brought a healing, Lord God, to humanity that could only come through you. Thank you for healing us and making us whole and complete the shedding of the blood of the Lamb. To count us not, Lord God, hallelujah, as we should be counted as guilty. To count us worthy in your beloved. Now we praise you today. Let this word touch the lives of those that are listening in. We're careful to give you the praise and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Last week we were talking about following Christ. We came behind that later in the week to remind you that when Jesus started his ministry, the first thing he called his disciples, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, 
And he told them to follow me. Immediately they left the ships and they followed Christ. Well, we see that they continued to follow him throughout his ministry upon the earth. And at the end of the ministry, the Lord let them know that the flock would be scattered because they would take the master and they would bruise him and they would put him to open shame and they would take his life. He would lay his life down, but he would allow humanity to nail him to the cross, to lift him up and to jam him in the earth. And we have been hearing this story now for a couple of weeks. But thank God we are reminded of the work of Jesus Christ and what he has wrought for us in the earth. But I want to remind you today that God is still calling us to move forward. He's calling us not only to follow him, but to continue to move forward in him to the mark of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we don't have time to go back to our past. What we notice here is that in this particular scripture, Jesus has already showed himself to his disciples on two other occasions. The Bible declares that this time Jesus is now appearing to seven of his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, which is also considered the Sea of Galilee. Jesus is now sitting on the seashore or the seaside. And the disciples have decided within themselves, Peter being the first, say unto them, I'm going fishing. I'm going fishing. I've seen the Christ. I've been excited. I've rejoiced. I know that he is living. I know that he is alive. I know that he has all power in his hand. I know that he's given us a commission to go and to preach the gospel. But I want you to know this. That in this moment in my time of being excited. In my time of being relaxed and comfortable. I'm going to go back and do a little bit of fishing. But how many of you know that God did not call you to go back to what he brought you out of? He didn't call you out of being fishers in the natural to be fishers in the spiritual realm to go back again to the old nature. For God has made us new creatures in Christ. He has changed us so that we could be in line and in step with his divine will, changed our thinking process, changed our conversation, and changed the way that we carry ourselves so that the light of Christ can be seen in us. So yes, the old way might have worked while we were just walking in the natural ignorant of who Jesus really was. And who Jesus is right now. Uh, but after we have come into the knowledge of Christ. After we have come into the knowledge that he has been raised from the dead. After we have come into the knowledge that he no longer resides in the ground. It is time for us to take up our cross and follow him. So Jesus is there while his disciples are out fishing. And the Bible says that they've toiled all night long trying to use the same old skill set to catch fish. Trying to use the same techniques to catch fish. But how many of y'all know that when God changes your direction, there is no going back to the old way. Jesus sitting there on the seashore. And after they toiled all night, and they were tired and frustrated, aggravated, 
Because with all of their labor, it seemed like it was all in vain. But when they came back to the shore, there was a man sitting there. He had some fire underneath his pan as he sitting there with fish, cooking. Praise our God and looks at them and says, children, have you any meat? In other words, in your own power, you can toil and struggle all you want. But in your own flesh, in your own strength, you'll never be able to produce what God can produce in your life. And it doesn't take God long to work out your problem. Hallelujah, it doesn't take God long to fix your crisis and your dilemma. But the Bible declares when they looked at Jesus, they said, no, Lord, we didn't catch anything. The Lord said, don't worry, just take your nets, cast them on the right side. In other words, the Lord always has specific instructions on how you can be blessed. God always has a plan, even in the midst of your struggle, to how you can be delivered. Uh, you may be fighting and struggling in your life with your problem, but Jesus is greater than your problem. And so his word is always working in our favor. And Jesus says, all you have to do is cast your net on the right side and you shall find. In other words, there is no doubt in God's ability. There is amen, no lack in him. There is no question about whether he's going to produce when his word has been sent forth, he must accomplish that which God has spoken in our midst. Somebody need to praise the Lord. Oh yes, the Bible said they cast their net at the instructions of God's word. In other words, if you follow me, praise our God, I'm going to show you that, that I'll never fail. I'm going to show you that my word is always going to work in your behalf. Praise the Lord. Hell, amen, or high waters, and that may come your way. But if you follow my word, I'm going to bless you if you're going out. God said, I'm going to bless you in your coming in. I'm going to bless you in the fruit of your body and in the fruit of your ground. I'll bless you in your storehouse. And if you follow my word, I'm going to send every demon in your life to a fight. Not by your power, not by your will, not by your word. Amen. But by the word, amen, that is spoken out of glory. Amen. For the word of God shall not fail. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will never fail. Somebody tell him hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible said that when they cast then let on the right side. I want you to know that God always has an abundance of blessings waiting for the believer. And that God always has an abundance of resources. And then waiting and then for his children. And then God always has an abundance. And then waiting for them that will trust in his word. And so when they drop their net. The Bible said they lifted them, but they had so many fish in their net until they had to drag it up to the shore. And yet the net did not break. Whenever you follow the Lord, amen, and you move forward in the, under the leading of the Holy Ghost. And then when you move forward under the leading and the direction of the Spirit of God, and then the 
lives amen the abundance will come amen but the net will never break amen the abundance amen will overflow your life amen but the nets amen will never amen will break or be weakened amen by the blessings of the Lord amen why amen because Jesus amen is saying to you now that I've given you the abundance I want you to bring amen the abundance unto me amen because in my hands I'm going to bless it and multiply I'm going to allow you amen to be a blessing not only in your life amen but to the lives of those amen that are around you they're going to recognize amen the power of God amen to the miraculous works that I am performing in your life and so if you let God he's going to show up in the midst of your deliver in the midst of your dry spell in the midst of your skill set amen lacking God is gonna show up and when he shows up he's gonna show out in your life somebody tell him hallelujah Oh, yes, amen. I heard the Lord say, Come and dine. Amen. Come and feast with me. Come and sit, amen, beside me and partake of the blessings that I've given unto you. The Lord is saying unto them, Amen, that I'm going to always be with you. I'm going to always, amen, work it out in your favor. And then he takes Peter to the side. And says, Peter, I want to know, do you love me? In other words, when you follow God every now and again, amen, he wants to know, do you really love me? If you love somebody, you need to share with them that you love them. Amen. Don't wait till the last hour of their life. Don't wait until they're in the ground to tell them that you love them. Amen. Don't wait until the breath has left their body and you bring roses to the church because you feel bad, because you never express how much you care. Amen. But now is the acceptable time to say, yes, Lord, I love you. And though he may ask you several times, you need to recognize like Peter on the third time, Peter says, yes, Lord. Amen. You know, amen. That love you. Amen. You know, amen. All things. Amen. Praise the name of our God. There's nothing that is hidden from you. Amen. Thou knowest, Lord. Amen. Everything about me, you know. Amen. Every hair on my head that used to be there. Hey, God, you know. Amen. You know everything. Thought that's in my mind, you know, and then every movement of my body, and then every motive, and then every and then hallelujah thing that I have done is already open before you, and so you know all things. But Lord, I just want you to know that in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of earth of the world being in chaos. In COVID 19, I want you to know I still love you. I love you. Praise our God in sickness and in health. I love you in richness or in poverty. And then because in my spirit, I will never be impoverished. In my spirit, I will always be rich if I have you. If I got you in my spirit. I am more than a conqueror. If you're living and abiding in me, Jesus, and that I have riches beyond imagination. If you 
fill me with your anointing. I am rich from the inside. And that because I have eternal life. If you have eternal life, and then you are rich because your father is the king of glory. And when it looks like and then you are losing, it is a lie from the pit. You are more than a conqueror. And then the redeemer of glory is living in you. And the redeemer and the giver of life is living in you. And you can rejoice because our God has already overcome the world. So Jesus saying to you today, it's time to follow me. But not only follow me, but it's time to continue to move forward. If we get past this pandemic, if we come out on the other side, still in the land of the living, Jesus is saying, I don't want you to go back to the way that you were. I don't want you to be lukewarm. I don't want you amen, to be cold. I don't want you amen, to be dead. I don't want you amen, to go back amen, to your brokenness. Amen. I don't want you to go back to your confusion. I don't want you to go back amen, to your dying ways. I don't want you to go back amen, to your fear and your doubt. But I want you to move forward in Christ. I want you to get a praise that will never run out. I want you to grab a hold of joy and then that will never let you go. Amen. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And then if you got joy, and then you have strength. Oh, oh tell him hallelujah. If you have joy, and then you have power. If you have joy, and then you can be an overcomer. If you got joy, and then it doesn't matter. And then if, and then you and then seek to forsake you and your friends and then leave you by yourself and then don't worry and then because I'm going to bring you peace and I'm going to help you to be an overcomer in Christ so this is your hour this is your day this is your opportunity to take him on by water baptism. Oh yes, you can come. You can put on your mask. I'll put on some gloves, but I'll baptize you with the name of Jesus. So you can rise to walk in the goodness of life. And then he wants to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. Because it is the Spirit of God that gets us ready to be with Him. If this Spirit of God be in you that raised Christ from the dead, He will take that mortal body, whether you are walking alive in it or you have fallen asleep, and you'll be changed. From mortal to immortality. Yes, yes. Because Christ has prepared a way for everyone that will follow after him. That will be filled with his spirit and his anointing. So if you lack that spirit of God in your life. I know how it feels to be separated from God. I know how it feels to be overcome by sin. All was born in sin. Everyone was shaped in iniquity. But praise God, Jesus came to break the chains of sin. To bring you out, hallelujah, of the prison of darkness. To bring light in your life. And an anointing that would destroy every yoke and loose every chain that the enemy has placed over your life. You can be free in Christ right now, wherever you are, 
Praise our God. You don't have to come into a building but worship Him from the depth of your soul. Jesus, fill me now. Fill me now, Jesus. Fill me now. So that I can live for you. So that I can walk with you. So that I can have a relationship with the Christ. Wash me in the blood of the Lamb right now. Make me whole and complete. And I will ever praise you. I will ever give you the glory. I will ever give you the honor. And I will ever give you the praise. This is the acceptable hour. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Jesus is going to do it for you. Right now if you let him. Oh Savior and Deliverer. For those that are listening on right now. I ask you to fill their life. In such a way with your presence and your spirit that they'll never be the same. Bring them closer to your side and let them have that relationship with you that will fill the void in their life and make them complete and whole. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Love you. Have a blessed week.